Thanks. Mayat, and I want to start the second thing straight away of um, uh, two people that have um, related to the club that have fallen victims, victims of, the, of the virus. Uh, one of them is uh, Keith Bedell, who's the former manager of the club and a very loved character, somebody that at some point I'd like to hear Peter and Tracy talk about him because he, um, he's very well known in the area and also Mike Appleby who was the secretary of the Spartan South Midlands League. So both of them rest in peace. Uh, and this is just a reminder that those numbers that we can hear on television, they, they're not just stats, but they are people. And, uh, and I hope meanwhile that not only you stay healthy and safe, that um, you follow the rules that have been imposed on us, and I hope everybody else, all the closest to you, are also okay. Um, now that I've got you all of, all of you here, uh, I wanted to say that quite clearly football is not the most important thing on people's mind right now. But I want you to know anyway that we are working behind the scenes to continue functioning and uh, to make sure that when this is over, we are ready to pick up again. Uh, in fact, if this started tomorrow or next month or in five months' time, we are ready. So uh, we'll have to be patient. We know we will. I, can, I just cannot wait for it to start, but I know that uh, it's going to take a while. Meanwhile, just insisting on the idea, we are working behind the scenes to make sure that we will be, you will find us in the same place where you left us. Mm -hmm. And we hope to find you in the same place where, where yes, we left us. So. Uh, this season, as we all know, has been null and void. But funnily enough, it's full of memories in here. That doesn't get null and void at all. Um, I will carry on so many games and goals and moments and excitement, and, uh, and that's why, as a club and as a chairman, we fought for the decision not to be null and void. But quite clearly, those that defended that were in the minority, because even though, to me, that's the most logical step to keep playing until it's, you know, whenever it's possible to keep playing until the end, we didn't get the, um, the whole of the league behind us, because I think most teams were not just they simply weren't interested for the whole thing to continue as they had failed in the season. So we have rewarded failure. Don't be confused about that. We have rewarded failure, but getting it null and void. But there are memories, and I would like you to share some of your memories. Talk, or even at some point, whenever you feel you want to, and, uh, and we'll let you talk, uh, because it's been so many this season. If I had to choose one, I'm going to choose it's an easy one, of course. It's the 4-4. Four -four. FA Cup game against uh, Saffron Walden. Uh, that was where uh, I, I'm in love with the whole, with the club, with the first team, men, ladies, with the under 20s, with youth. Everything we do, I absolutely adore. But the sound that came from the stands on that day suggested to me that I wasn't on my own loving what we're doing, loving you, loving the way you put it in, and the effort that you put it in. So. I, uh, I, will, I will choose that one ahead of any other memory because it was, uh, it was even though it's a draw, tell everybody that it's not, about, it's not about winning. It's about what you create on the pitch and what you did on that day uh, in what was it, 120 minutes, was something that will stay in my mind and I think in many other people's minds as well for a long time. So I have to thank you for that. Next, let me hand over to um, our secretary, Tracy James. She will present the awards. I will ask a couple of questions to those that, um, that win. We'll hear from the coaches as well. So, um, Tracy, the awards. Just a few, do you want to say a few words um, really on the season itself? As we know, oh, yes. um, given the extraordinary circumstances, the season has been declared null and void. Um, but let's not forget that this has been the most successful season as far as the first team is concerned in the history of the club finishing third. I firmly believe that um, had we been given the opportunity, we would have made it into a playoff position. Um, and then who knows, it would have been promotion to step four. But we can't look at that. I think we take a tremendous amount of positives from the season. For me, it was the case of turning up at clubs, um, away clubs, who knew that they were going to be in for a really tough game. That hasn't happened for a long time. Sometimes you turn up at clubs and they kind of look at Biggles Wage United, oh, well, where have they finished last season, the season before that? Now I think we've really built ourselves 
a strong reputation as a club. And in my opinion, I think we played the best football of any team that we played in the season. Um, to finish third is, is a fantastic achievement. I think I would, if anything, I would have preferred, if I have to have a negative, to have gone a bit further in the FA Vars. I think we had the squad and the players to have gone further in that. Um, I think the, the team that we, the squad that we finished with was well and truly capable of winning that league and going far in the Vars. But we had to have that, that sort of curve from where we were at the start of the season up to where we finished. Um, it's been fantastic. The players have been really on board with everything the club um, wants to do. And, you know, we go on season, season, and we know that we're building and we have got a family club that um, certainly as any player that comes in feels part of a family and they're made to feel a family straight away. So it's, it's brilliant in that. The latest team themselves finished second in their division. So we're hoping that they'll finish in a promotion and be promoted. And the under 23s, um, fantastic season in their first season in men's football, straight in at step seven in the Beds Premier, certainly held their own and finished mid table. And from our presentation that we had earlier, they are going to be um, a real squad of players that we can look forward to and to push on into the first team to give more pressure on the first team players for next season. So that's a really good sound basis and a form formation that we, we should be proud of. And behind the scenes, um, we've got a really good structure. We now have a board, we have a senior committee, we had a youth committee and we have a media team. And I think, you know, if, if we all held our hands up, we think, I think we've got one of the best media teams in non-league football and um, recognised as one of the best media teams. And I think tonight is one of those examples of where we can show other clubs what it is to actually hold a end of season presentation in these difficult circumstances and still be all together and showing that we can overcome everything and have a kind of celebration of, of the season that we've had. Be the ladies head coach. So I only can say thank you for you. And I want to say you thank you. Commitment. Yeah. And I want to say thank you as well to all the volunteers, Tracy and all these people, because without them, we can play in Beagle's way. We can compete. We can have the clubhouse that we have. We can have the facilities and all this stuff is all thanks to them. So this is the two first things that I want to say. And I think now is the, the end of the season. I think it's a good opportunity to compare the only two seasons that the team play. And I think if we compare the last season and, the, and this season, at least the two thirds of this season, we can see the improvement of the team. So hopefully, hopefully, oh, <laughs> so hopefully the team can continue improving and growing because you can achieve whatever you want. And the last thing that I want to say is that I'm really proud of these players because their commitment was unbelievable during the whole season for all of them. So thank you for that. So I only want to say thank you, all of you. <laughs> no more. It's the day to do, it's, it's the day to do so. Um, yeah. Let me just say we had this dream a few years ago of uh, having a, um, a first team, uh, a ladies first team that uh, that would play in the way that we played because of United, but also that would bring the amount of things that you bring to the club. I think we got as much from you as we may have offered you. And and the dream continues. Um, every, every year we've learned from what we've been doing. Uh, eventually we would like to have a path by which young players from their lower ranks get into the first team. But, um, but as a measure of, uh, of change and developing and learning, uh, we have decided at, uh, at a senior committee level and board level that uh, the fees of the, of the ladies will be reduced as, uh, to as little as possible. Um, I think you deserve the same treatment as the men's first team and eventually we will get there. So I wanted to say that 
because we're completely committed to the idea of uh, of you know you you keep playing in second medal and you keep learning developing i don't know which division we will be in next season i don't know when next season will start but in any case i think we already created um uh, a platform <coughs> for what should be in few years time but already in, on the way perhaps the best uh, ladies team in the area that's the ambition sure. and uh, and that's what uh, that's what we want to get to uh, it also has been a very uh, easy to manage uh, team thinking from the from the top of the umbrella if you like um, we hardly heard from you you didn't need anything <laughs> you were just uh, doing your thing uh, and even created uh, a fantastic um, media department that um, did that incredible video with the um, with the toilet uh, <laughs> rolls, which um, I can see that you had a lot of. So stop queuing for more. But, uh, but you actually managed to get a video that was watched by twenty odd thousand people. So uh, that was great, and it was like it's like you just did it, uh, and and that's one thing that obviously uh, when when you are have to deal with more teams. It's something you really appreciate, the ability to actually, not only to do your own thing, to do it well as well. And meanwhile, create an atmosphere that has, that has uh, made a team that has been competitive. Uh, you have accepted to go, you know, we, 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 we turned the screw a little bit more in terms of comp competitiveness and you've, you've be become more competitive. It's been wonderful to, to watch and to follow. Um, so having said all that, I think it's time to, uh, to hand some awards now that all the technical side has been sorted. By the way, I don't know whose fault it was. Yeah. <laughs> Mine. So sorry about that. Really? really? What did you, what did what you, did you do wrong, wrong then? then? I had other things open in the computer that I should have switched off. But anyway, it's all sorted <laughs> now. And I think I'll hand over to uh, Tracy to, um, to be telling us what the procedure is and what comes next. Okay, well, it's the, it's the awards and um, we have a running order. I have some very expensive... Poundland envelopes here with the names of the winners in. <laughs> I haven't got my um, outfits on ready for the um, Oscars, but um, you'll have to put up with this. Um, what I'll do is I'll introduce Christina, who will um, say a little bit about the winners, and then I'll go to Christina. Go on, I. That's not anyone that's going down with anything. Um, so the first award is for the um, goal, leading goal scorer. Um, for the men's team is the goal of the season, but um, this one is the leading goal scorer. So yeah. if I hand over to you, if you'd like to say a few things about the leading goal scorer. Yeah, yeah, because I, I, I prefer... I prefer to be the, not to be, I prefer to choose the top goal scorer than the best goal in the league because we we score millions of goals. So it's going to be crazy to choose only one because we score millions of beautiful goals. So for this reason, I, I choose the top goal scorer because I think that she maintained the consistency during the whole season we play. And I think she deserves, so that's the reason. Okay. Leading goal scorer, there is, of course, no trophies to actually hand over, but when we're all back together again, there will be a presentation of uh, physical awards to the person. So you won't be surprised that the leading goal scorer was Tracy James. No, I guess. <laughs> I, I kind of went back 30 years there. The leading goal scorer, Kaylee Saunders. Well done, Kaylee. Well done, Kaylee. Hi, I cannot see your face. Hello, where, are you? where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? I'm here. Anyway, um, let me ask you a couple of a couple of uh, questions. First of all, <laughs> how easy it is to score a goal in our league? Very. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, it, it's obviously about about the team. You know, it's not about necessarily just. I'm not a player that will take the ball around loads of people to score a goal. So. Oh, God, you can't see the same games as me then. <laughs> <laughs> without, without the team, then I certainly wouldn't be scoring as many goals as what I have done. So it's, it's okay. down to them. Let me ask you in a different way then. Uh, what does it feel? Because, uh, you know, we all dream of being you, you know, the, the main goal scorer, the one who wins the games, 
the one who scores all the goals and then can go out and, and brag about it. So how does it feel to score a goal? Tell us. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, I don't really know, obviously. Like I said, for me, I'm very much a team player anyway, so it's not just about me as an individual. Um, I think the team have performed fantastically throughout the season. So to be able to come out on top as scoring the most goals and obviously helping others score goals as well, then obviously, yeah, it's a great feeling. Obviously, it would have been great to finish the season and see where we would have ended up. But, you know, we are where we are. Now, t tell us a little bit the process. We heard it from, uh, from Christina, from Giacomo as well. The process that uh, you've gone through this season. Tell us a little bit if it's been any, any changes, any developments, uh, what you've seen from the players' point of view. Um, I think it's been fantastic, especially to have the club support behind us. I think Chris has been a fantastic addition um, to the team um, from, you know, training and match days. I mean, the team's always been close. We've had a lot of new players come in this year and we've been able to maintain the team being close and everyone seems to get on really well. And I think that's really shown on match days. I mean, compared to last season, if you see, or even the start of the season, if you see some of the games compared to the later in the season and the, the football that we were playing, it's certainly improved a long way. And I've only been with the club for two years and I know some people have played longer together, but it's certainly, um, you know, the team has definitely gelled this year and obviously it's exciting for next season as well. Hopefully if we, you know, can move up and progress. Okay, so if you go into um, you, your, uh, your, the memory that has been erased from all of us, uh, uh, and because uh, this season didn't exist, of course, but if you just dig deep, see uh, if you can find a little moment, something that you'll take. Uh, uh, it could be a gesture, it could be a, a hug, it could be a goal, it could be a, something funny that you remember from the season. Um, Zoe storming out in the players' players meeting. Oh no! Um... <laughs> wow, is that how you're jumping out like that, Kaylee? <laughs> um, I think. Oh, I don't really know. Um... By the way, while you think about it, everybody else that's going to be interviewed will get the same question. So you start thinking about your special. Uh, at least they've got some warning. Um, I've, I think the nine-one. I think it was referred to earlier um, by yourself. The game against Hitchin. Um, I think not only was it, you know, a 9-1 win, but together the, the way the team played on that day, um, that I think for me that's when it gelled. It was a good moment that that's when the team actually gelled. We played good football um, and we continued to score goals as well, which obviously helped. But yeah, I'll definitely say that was probably a turning moment in the season where the team actually started to play well together and we started to actually gel as a squad and as a team as well. Great. So, um, congratulations. Thank you. Now, we're going to, uh, Tracy, you're going to do the um, uh, presentation for the young player of the season. But before yeah. that, because I've been talking about uh, the possibility, the dream uh, of actually getting young players through to the first team. And in fact, some of them have exactly done that. I like uh, Matt Burgess, to, uh, the head of the uh, of youth, to actually have a few words right now, Matt. Yeah. Yeah, here. Hello, everyone. <laughs> I've been uh, watching. Uh, I've, I, uh, I was watching on the YouTube link earlier when all the uh, static. I had to turn that off. I wondered what it was to begin with, but uh, it's great that it's all working now. Yeah, I would just like to say uh, the team this year has been an example exactly what we're trying to do, basically, with the joint joining of the youth and the senior teams. Uh, obviously, last year we uh, I was with the the under 16s girls. Hi, hi, Del. <laughs> I was with the under 16s girls, and uh, the year before that, I was with the under 16s girls, which uh, was obviously the older age group. So it was lovely to start with to see the likes of uh, Bella G and Tasha Tashai Sims in the team last year. And uh, they've progressed well. But uh, I was particularly pleased with uh, the debutants who were Robin Gibbons and Helen. Helen uh, has, and, and those two girls as well, have been an absolute integral part in the team. Uh, of, of the matches I've watched, which isn't as many as I wanted to do, has been... Hello? Are you all there? Yeah, yeah. Keep going. <laughs> They've been an absolute integral part, and it's so good. It's so good to see uh, 
It's so good to see such a blend of ages between uh, the oldest that, dare I say, are probably uh, pushing forward. Uh, and the youngest, uh, only really, they're only under 17. So I think uh, that that kind of uh, injection of young players into the into the squad has been integral, as well as uh, what's been mentioned earlier, Christina coming along and the, and the, and the whole thing the whole club getting behind the team as well. So I'd just like to say it's a great example to set to the other teams, the boys' teams maybe in the future to do the same. So well done, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Matt. OK, so on that then, uh, the young player of the season... Christine, if you want to say something about your selection of young player of the season. Yeah, I'm trying to say something without the other players' guess, but, but it's going to be impossible, I think. <laughs> By the way, I tried. Well, she's really young, probably. She's not the youngest girl in the squad, but I think she's really a good footballer and she improved a lot this season. She changed her position, but I think he's playing in the best position now for her. So... I think she deserves this. So, Tracy. Okay. Young Player of the Year. Expensive envelope. Tash Sims. Hey. Not Tash. Stop driving. Thank you. Ah, so, you managed, Tash, well done, you managed Tash. To, uh, to, ch to charge your phone. Pardon? You managed to charge your phone. Hey. Really yeah, I got back just in time. I was on 1%. <laughs> Gosh, um, for you, I mean, you are an example of what we like the club to be. You, you were in the most successful team that Biggles United has had since my tenure at the club. Um, and, and you jump into the first team. So tell us a little bit about that story, that journey, that process. Um, it all started with, so that, with that early team, wasn't it? Yeah, I started with the early team. I think it was like under 15s. Um, yeah, no, it was quite good playing with them and playing with people my age. Um, and yeah, we played against a lot of hard teams, but we won. Um, I think we were close to winning the league a couple of times. We'd been in cup finals, so it was all good. And then jumping into the first team, it was a bit different um, playing with older people. Um, so yeah, it was a bit strange at first, but then being around people that were older made me a lot comfortable. And yeah, found it quite easy, especially this next this season we just played. So, yeah, I found quite comfortable and I'm trying to adapt even more every season. But, yeah, I'm liking it. You you, you had to go through a, a little bit of a, well, a big injury yourself. So, uh, the, the good thing was that you came over it and you're actually still loving the idea of playing, of developing, of learning, of, uh, you know, taking the comes yeah. on your way and your strife. Yes. <laughs> Bernard. Put it in Put it style. Conta do cheese, Maduchu. Maduchu. Bernard, put it in silence. Oh. <laughs> yes, yeah, so, um, I think a few years ago, uh, I tore my uh, ACL in my knee. That was quite hard to come back from, but um, I played one season with the, I think it was under 16s, and then straight from the ladies' team. It's still quite nice to be playing, and yeah, I still wish to play few seasons on so got I still think I've got a few more years left in me before it wears out again oh definitely and hopefully at Biggles United as well um, yeah. but what but going back to this idea of um, of you going through through the ranks of course we would have liked the under 16s to continue but we see the difficulties when it gets to 17 18 <laughs> to keep a team together so the jump when you go into a changing room full of um, uh, I need to use the right word experienced players um, what was it like for you? You felt that they welcomed you, that they um, that they were looking after you? Yeah, they were very welcoming um, when I came into the team, especially Lou. I feel like she always checked on me all the time. Um, so, yeah, that was quite nice. It was quite comforting. Okay. And, uh, and oh. And she left. <laughs> no, she hasn't left yet. Well, yeah. <laughs> just just finally, what, yeah, what, well. what's your dream in, in, in football? What do you think football... What do you want football to be for you? Um, to be honest, I think football's quite inspiring for me. It's always something that I've looked up to. Um, so, yeah, I just enjoy watching it, enjoy playing it. And, yeah. 
Tash, you are an example to all of us, and I really appreciate you being with us and playing with us. So, well done for the work. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Well done, Tash. Can I say two words about Tash, if yes. you don't mind? Yes, Giacomo. Um, well, I would like to spend words for everyone, but obviously we got time. We got. Uh, not much time, so I will just spend special words just for Tasha for one only reason. Last season, when I came to watch some games of the ladies, um, I saw a player coming from the bench. Her quality was good. She was brought in very late in the game, and she she showed some technical skills. Matt told me, oh, she was the best of uh, our lot, I think. Uh, from Don't the U. Tell her that. Don't tell her that. No, um, I dreamt about this word, this chat with Matt. It never <laughs> happened. Forget about it. Um, so I saw a shy girl um, with some potential. Um, I think she's improved a lot because at the end of the last part of the season, I couldn't see a shy player anymore. I just saw the potential coming through. So I think she did massively efforts to take what was already inside of her and take it off and show to everyone. So well done. Thank you. Jamal. Thank you. And finally, finally something, something for, for Arsenal. Arsenal. <laughs> <laughs> Good life. It's two months you don't lose games, so it's okay. <laughs> Tracy. Tracy, you're on mute. You're on mute. Yeah. I'm out. Right, this, the next award is the Sportswoman of the Year. And this is an award that um, the club will give to someone who um, is a player um, but does that ex goes that extra mile uh, for the club and for the team. Um, so it's not necessarily what they do on the football pitch or what they do on the training pitch. It's that person that actually goes and does that bit more bit more than than just being a player so um if i can just say that this person from what i've seen um has been instrumental in um raising the profile of the the women's team and the women's game in general really for the club so christina if you want to say any more about this particular person yeah she goes an extra mile for the team from even for me because she we talk every week probably each couple of days we talk through WhatsApp and we just share thinkings and share things about the team. And I think she deserves this, this award more than other players because she, her commitment, not only with the team in the pitch, even without, was unbelievable. So for Okay, that the winner of the Sportswoman of the Year for the, the ladies team is Lou Grocott. <laughs> Lou, you're going to have to unmute <laughs> that one. Uh, so congratulations, Lou. Um, and tell us a little bit, You when, earlier on when you came in into, um, into the club, if you like, very, very early on, you realized that there was, um, there was a possibility of helping beyond what happened on the pitch. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. So I wonder if you can tell us a little bit your experience in that. Um, I've, re I've really enjoyed helping out. Um, I felt a bit um, useless at first. Like I wanted to help out with Twitter and things like that. And it was all new. Um, I'm not great at technology, um, but I wanted to try and help in some way. Um, like Jodie's helped me a lot, to be fair, um, to start with. She she helped me get, get with the times a little bit. But um, yeah, I've done I've done as much as I can but um, always had support from the club so if I've had any questions there's always been someone there so that's helped and, I'm still uh, really surprised by the way. <laughs> well uh, you shouldn't be because I think we all know the, uh, the value of what you what you put in, in, in place and and I think it's important to um, to um, push the profile of uh, of female football but also generally of, of the club as well via that because we we do believe in the possibility of growing this way. I don't know if you were behind or who was behind, or I'm sure you were part of it. The, the famous video that's been- everywhere. Oh, sorry. So Zoe Malloy um, 
put that all together. So um, yeah, it was a yeah, it was really well done to Zoe. To be fair, because that's past my technical ability. Um, I've, I mean, I wish I'd put it together, uh, but yeah, Zoe Zoe created it. And I've um, literally streamed it, and yeah, so I was trying to get a another one for the team, and I'm sure we will get more videos as time goes on. So I will get better. Um, I felt guilty at times, um, so uh, taking like videos at training because we only get an hour slot. So by the time we've done the warm up, um, like I, I obviously need to train myself. Um, so if I video that that bit's been a bit difficult because I felt if I if I video then I'm not training as much. So didn't want that to come across wrong. So, um, but we'll work something out for next season um, to work differently to get more from it. If that makes sense. Yeah, from my point of view, please, please continue. And uh, and obviously, yes, I know what it means. It's not ideal that you're doing it while you should be training. But at the same time, it, it allows us to share some of the times that you spend together and some of the things that you do. And and it keeps the uh, keeps the team alive for for all of us. We cannot be we cannot oh, be in all the training bad. sessions. We cannot be in the games in all the games. But uh, it's an important part of the club. So I appreciate that a lot. Me personally as well. I appreciate the effort that you put it in, but tell us a little bit about the the group, the um, the uh, you know the, the the good things of the group, the things that you will take with you, the good memories. What from our team? Yeah, the good memories from the team. Oh, amazing! Um, wait, I've, I've played for this is my seventeenth season in ladies football, and um, there it is. It's going to sound really corny, but it, it does feel like a family. Um, there's um there's a there's i'm a friend of every single player in that team and i've got time for absolutely everyone because and they've got time for me and it's it's really lovely uh, to be able to um just switch off from a personal level uh, being a mum of two under four um it's quite nice to turn up and be um, lou and not mummy and the players have been there for me and the hitching game for me stood out in a totally different way to everybody else because that was my uh, toughest, uh, toughest game in a different way. Um, so, but I had the support of everybody in the team, and yeah, it will it will continue. And I've I've got to say while I while I'm speaking, how proud I am of um, the young players coming through. Um, I think they've been fantastic, um, each and every single one of them. And uh, for the more experienced players, the support they've given them, um, I think is amazing. And you just wouldn't get it at any other team. It's very, it's very different. Um, and I'm really proud to be part of it. Yeah, just just to finish, it did it did send from the beginning. It did feel like you were you were a family coming in, yeah. and then you made us our family. So I also feel absolutely welcome every time I, I come and join you. And I know that I haven't done enough because of my work commitments and um, I'm living in two countries. But uh, but I'm very very proud of of what everything everything you've done and the way you've done it. And I, and, I, and I really hope that everything continues the same next season. So, Lou, congratulations, and you deserve it. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Yeah, uh, could I just add one more thing about Lou? Um, it's just been really wonderful working with Lou, even, even though it's not like, uh, you know, it's a week-in, week-out thing. She's absolutely brilliant in being able to reach out uh, and ask for the right kind of help, being able to take initiative, and it's been so helpful. Uh, I haven't really done a lot for the ladies team, really. But she's always pushed. She's found something. And whoever's doing it, she's kind of brought it together. And uh, thank you, Lou. Thanks for that. Well, thank Aria, you for your support. Our heads of communication, which I cannot see him right now. But anyway, he's there. Uh, so thank you very much, Aria. And Tracy. OK, thank you, Kim. The um, next, work, next award is the Manager's Player of the Year. Um, so I'm presuming that this is discussion between uh, Chris and Jack and Mo as to who the manager's player of the year should be. So, Chris, if you'd like to say a few words about this. Yeah, yeah. We choose them or we talk about her because I, I, I'm like a coach. I want to have this player always in my team because... Her, her commitment, not only on the pitch, without the pitch, the way that she helped to the other players, the way that she managed the situation. You know, I don't know if call her leader, but could be a leader for the group. 
Mm-hmm. And for me, it was amazing. A couple of the first couple of times I, I saw her, I said, Oh, that's a player that I want in my teams always because she's not only in the pitch, even without the pitch, she's amazing. And well, well, if I said something, she is going to be, she is going to know how she is. So she's she is always the boss. So she deserves. So, okay. Giacomo, if you want to say something, or I was on mute. Sorry, I wouldn't. I wasn't <laughs> expected to be involved into this conversation again. Um, now, I think uh, without spoiling the name that she has absolutely <laughs> astonishing time with the club, despite me short. So... Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it's, it's amazing how she managed to get into the team. Everyone got in, in get welcome, despite the age, despite the level. And But I think that she's the one that got more integrated than anyone else. Since the first week, it seems like she was in the in, in the team for four seasons. I couldn't see that she was a newcomer. Okay, so that might give some clues. The manager's player of the year for the ladies team is Jody Malloy. Jody. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thanks, Jody. boss. Uh, thank you, boss. Jody, the, the reason you haven't heard a much louder ovation is because everybody's on mute. So we see them clapping, but we don't hear them clapping. <laughs> but, uh, I can see that everybody was on their feet. They were standing uh, and they were agreeing that you were the, um, the, the manager's player of, of the year on, um, for a good reason. How was the season for you? Uh, despite it being obviously cut short, um, for my first season at Biggleswade, I've, I've really enjoyed it. I mean, everyone there has made me feel welcome. Um, and obviously, on the league standing, sitting second, only losing two games up for promotion. I think, you know, that speaks volumes for itself. As a team, we've played really well in most games. And um, I'm really looking forward to next season when and if we can play it. <laughs> So how how does what would you say you've you've learned in that process? So uh, for you personally as a player, what what have you in, uh, improved on? Um, well, at my old club, I was uh, playing centre back. So this season, I've been allowed to step back in centre of midfield. Um, so I've learned a lot from Chris and um, Giacomo. Um, you know, on working with that and working with other players at different positions. So um, I felt like I've improved on that aspect of things. There was, there's a lot of you and, uh, and uh, all of you are here and that suggests to me that there was a lot of competition for places. Uh, is that something that, uh, that you welcome and that you appreciate it? Yeah, of course. I think uh, everyone deserves to fight for their place and prove themselves right in training and games um, so that everyone gets a fair chance. Um, yeah, pretty much. I think, it's, I think it's needed. It pushes other people um, and myself to want to be in that starting 11 every Sunday. It'd be good that, uh, uh, that we, get, we get to the next division and we get challenged and there will be defeats and there will be victories, perhaps, perhaps more defeats that we had. So it is the kind of challenge that you would also look forward to? Oh, yeah, of course. I just want to win. Win everything you can, and, but enjoy it at the same time. And I feel like uh, as a team, we definitely have the potential to get some silverware in. One of the things that uh, I've always done for the club is to bring people from different backgrounds, different nations, uh, different ways of understanding the game, but that they are, they are more or less in the same way length as, as, as I am. So you've got, you have to deal with an Italian and with a Spanish uh, woman. So how did, how did that work out for you? I mean, it was an experience to start with. Obviously, all my old coaches have been uh, <laughs> English speaking, but it's, it's been great. Um, Obviously, with Christina, she's got a different background in football. So I've learned a lot from both of them. Um, it's been a real experience, something that, you know, I won't forget. OK, talking about forgetting, we won't forget that there was a season, no matter what they say to us. So remind us uh, one or two good moments, a funny one, perhaps, and, and one that you particularly remember of the season. Um, particular one for me is the League Cup game against Royston, uh, playing a team in the division above. Um, 
and went out and won 3-1. Uh, I think it was 1-1 at full time, so we had to go to extra time. But we all put in a shift and got there in the end. So that, for me, is a is a standout. Uh, I can't actually think of a funny moment off the top of my head. Uh, <laughs> all right. Jody, you deserve it. Thank you Thank very you. much and congratulations. Thank you very Good much. Good Jody. Thanks. Okay, the final awards um, is uh, when I was a player, to me this was the, the best of the best. Um, it's that your players, your teammates, your friends um, that vote for it, um, it means a lot because for the most part it means that you've played consistently throughout the season. Um, you're recognised by your teammates, your peers as the best player of the season and um, it's the player's player of the year um, that's voted for by your players um, and your teammates. So the ladies team player's player vote has gone to expensive envelope. And she gets the... The, she gets the double, more than double votes than the second one. So really, all right. Her, so she her got, victory was <laughs> you know, almost unanimous. Yeah, is Helen Spencer. Helen. Woo! Thank well done, you. Helen. Thanks, everyone. Well done, Helen. Well done, Helen. Let me find you so I can Helen. see. <laughs> Where are you, Helen? Oh, there you are. Helen, um, tell us tell us what the season was like. Congratulations, first of all, and tell us what the season was like for you. I mean, the season's been great. Obviously, it's my first season in women's football, so it's a bit different playing 90 minutes and everything. But, yeah, everyone's been so nice, and <laughs> I couldn't have asked for anything better, really. So if it's your first season, when you get onto, the, onto that pitch, any pitch, the second medal, say, does the pitch feel very, very big? No, nah, because we were still playing on like full size pitches when I was in the under 16s, but it was 40 minutes each way instead, I think. So, yeah, so an extra 10 minutes does make quite a bit of difference. So, what's the difference? What's the difference when you move to, um, to uh, senior, senior football? But obviously, a lot of the opposition are older, more physically challenging, and everything. But personally, I've loved that having a bit more of a challenge to up against, especially being in defence. So yeah. Also, yeah, it allows you to develop different different ways of um, of, of nurturing your talent. No, if you cannot fight for a ball because they're going to be bigger than you, you just have to be more intelligent. You feel that you've been doing that this season? Yeah, I think I've definitely improved, and no doubt because of playing against tougher, older people than before. And yeah, I'm just excited to play again next season and keep on improving. Keep it on. Uh, but what has it been like to uh, to deal with an Italian and a Spaniard? Eh? <laughs> I was already a bit used to a Spaniard because I had Fran as a coach oh. for the past two seasons before. But yeah, it's. <laughs> I mean, it's great. It's great. <laughs> we have good fun as well. In fact, as you mentioned, Fran, um, if you if you like, uh, it'd be good if you say a few words to Fran because the the dream of having a um, a ladies team started with conversations that we had with him and Matt, uh, in which we thought let's start with under 16s or under 15s and then take it on, and uh, and that that meant working with uh, girls that never played football before, but I felt that both Matt and um, uh, and, and certainly Fran uh, and more people that were involved with that team uh, actually had the patience and the dedication to give that team time and love and care for you to grow. So, so tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing how much time and effort everyone puts in to helping us. And yeah, I don't really know what else I can say because it's just, it's amazing. Yeah. Just thank you to everyone. Phil, Matt, and, uh, and Fran were were the mm. ones pushing pushing that team, and uh, and I'm glad to see the likes uh, the likes of you and Tash and others to just get into the first team and and push on. So, Helen, congratulations, you deserve it. Yeah. Thank you. Well done, Helen. Well done, Helen. Crazy. Um, that's it. That's the last okay. one, game. Okay. Before we go, it'd be good to um for you to take us into that changing room and into that group. And to tell us stories of what has I'm happened. Not going to change. 
I'll go to the toilet. I'll go to the toilet. Okay, you can go to the toilet. But generally, any of you, uh, would you like to share some stories of the season, things that uh, that tells us a little bit what what life was there inside the, inside the changing room? Who who wants to go? <laughs> well, if the lady don't speak, I will try to bring something that, in my opinion, was key because in the end. Uh, the first game against Sotfold, where we have been behind for the first half, we conceded four goals and we couldn't understand why we were behind. And that was brilliant to see that a team came back. It's the first game of the season. If that goes wrong, very wrong that way, that could destroy the whole season because that is starting with low confidence especially because we had such big challenges during the pre-season that weren't really into our ground. Sometimes with the danceable, we weren't there yet. Uh, I think the reaction that we had, and we won the game 8-4, I think that was amazing. That t told us how the season would have gone. Because you didn't give up on the first game, and then you fought hard every single game. I haven't seen any any single game you ladies give up. No, so no. that was brilliant for me. I think one of the funniest things was Stockfold, uh, the 8-4 game, where I think, um, was it um, King, I forget, Sarah was the referee, and the game was stopped for about five or six times in the first 10 minutes for Stockfold to remove all their jewellery from their players. Earrings, um I don't know about lipstick, but <laughs> that was quite a, a funny scenario. But it is great watching the ladies' team play. And you can see, again, right the way through the sets of teams, the academy, the under-23s, the first team, all trying to play the same way. And it's, uh, you know, they, they were a step above uh, the, the other teams in that division. And it's been a progression from, as Matt said earlier, the under-16 sides that uh, you know, won the league on the last game of the season against Dunstable. were unlucky a couple of weeks before in the league. And it's progressed from there, although we've got a handful of those players like Tasha in there. It's it's a, a joy to watch. I'd just like to say something yep. to all of the team. <laughs> so it was a very good season. Um, to this day, my jacket still hasn't turned up. <laughs> So when everyone wants to join the season again, I'd like my jacket and my sweets, please. <laughs> that jacket changes games. Literally. Someone <laughs> went home with two jackets that day. So, you know. I think it's been mentioned before, I think how the team actually get on, how well the team actually get on is fantastic. And the new players that have come in have gelled really well with everyone. So it's not like I don't think anyone like doesn't really get on. Um, I mean, maybe some closer than others, but I think it that's what really gels the team and the fact that you know you want to see everyone on the Wednesday, you want to see everyone on Sunday, um, and I think that really helps. And especially you know the commitment of everyone, everybody turns up to training pretty much. You know, I've never played in a team where everybody turns up to training, and I think that's you know fantastic that everyone. So engaged, and hopefully everyone will be engaged again next season. Um, I mean, certainly, you know, I will. So, it, you know, we look forward to next season and, and the support of the club. So, we can only thank everybody for the support and that that they've given to the team, um, and especially hosting this fire during these um, <laughs> unprecedented. Un unprecedented times. <laughs> they are indeed. That's okay, Lee. Thank you. No one else speaks up, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> Can we have a few words from the captains that haven't spoke at all today? Yeah, that's yeah. true. One, Gemma, come on. One. one, two, three, four, or five. I'm number five. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Um, Jack, we're all captains. You are all leaders, but captains, only few. Oh, I like that. Okay. But all leaders, that's important. Yeah. Well, I, oh. okay. As a captain, I would like to thank all of the uh, my teammates and my vice captains and the coaching staff and everybody behind the scenes, technical everybody. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. 
Much appreciated. Thank you, Hand over to my vice captain. She's a mute, though. Yeah, you're mute. Hi, <laughs> Hi everyone. Yeah, I, I, I mirror what Vicky said. Thank you to everybody. Um, and one of my favourite moments was Lou helping another player out because she got cramped twice in the game. I don't know if you guys remember that. Yeah. Um, and so because of that, that shows what we're like as a team. We don't just care about us. We actually do care about other teams too. So that's why I love this team. Um, so well done, everyone. Well done, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Keep safe. And I'll see you next yeah. season. Thank you Thank very much you. for having Thank you. Thank you. time with us tonight. Bye. 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 Now, everybody who wants to stay on uh, in 15 minutes, is when it starts the uh, first team's uh, men's first team's presentation. <laughs>